I'm Kevin Stobo, and my definition of relentless is just getting back up every time you get knocked down. Or, you know what? Another version of rel- relentless for me is, again, I'll talk about Connor McDavid or Tiger Woods. I mean, there's hockey players out there that are good. There's golfers out there that are good. These two fellas were relentless in the pursuit to be the best of the best. And just the determination it took to get to where they are is a kind of relentless that I strive to get, and I probably never will. But that's a different level of relentlessness, in my opinion. Hi, I'm Tim Nutt, and uh, my definition of relentless may be a little uh, unusual, but I believe that uh, finding something meaningful to do and work in the process, learn the the trade and not the tricks of the trade, and uh, you're probably going to make it to where you need to be. Just there's a chance to be better and to improve on everything. Nothing you you have is 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 solid, written in stone. You can always make it whatever your process or your product better. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Relentless Podcast. I am Kyle Dubay, and I am very happy today to have a, a couple of great guys in the studio. First time Easy. we're ever doing <laughs> first time we're ever doing stuff. <laughs> a double uh, uh, guest interview, uh, which is cool. We've got comedians Tim Nutt and Kevin Stobo. Tim Nutt, Kevin Stobo. They are currently playing the You Can Use Services Comedy Nights fundraiser. So glad you guys are hey, uh, are here. Thanks for having us. Great yeah. night last night. Hopefully. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Two more no. good nights. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's good crowd last night. Good crowd. Yeah, good crowd. Yeah. But Monday nights are warm ups. You know, okay, like we're well, a lookout. That's look a good out. sign. That's a good sign. <laughs> look out. <laughs> Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Nothing like Tuesday and Wednesday night crowds. Oh man, <laughs> it's rare to have them in the comedy business. Oh yeah. When's no, the last no, time no. you did a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? I, I can't. Even, I no. don't think I ever have. Oh, you know what? I don't. I did the Stampede years ago. Oh, that's and I, I was like and eleven nights straight. That's we're, right. We're you close. Did the Grand Stand show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're close. Listen, guys. I'm so happy you're here. We talked a little bit before we started recording um, about about uh, why we're doing this podcast. The whole concept of being relentless. You know why we do this for you, right. can use services, all that. And I, I just think it's gonna be a fun conversation with you guys. Uh, you know, I don't want it to be. Uh, you know, let's just talk about comedy right. and and tell us your all your road stories and and all that type of stuff. <laughs> It'd be a four hour podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe longer. Yeah, no but but we want to get to know you guys. I want to get to know how you got started in this. I want to get to know why you do what you do. And and I know talking to both of you, um, you guys actually a little a little you know. I don't, want, I don't want, should I say later in your career? Yeah. Because you sure. guys aren't rookies. Well, we've no. been doing it for, holy crap. Yeah, no, in May it'll be 30 years. Oh, 30. Cinco de Mayo was wow. the first I think time I'm ever. I close yeah. to 26, 27. Yeah, it's oh, been man. a, wow. Yeah, I yeah. started when I was 19. Yourself? Yeah. Uh, I was 23. Yeah, okay. Wow. So. Yeah. wow, so that's impressive. So here's the thing is, why did you guys get into this? Kevin, we'll start with you. Like, okay. what, what, uh, what made you do comedy? Well, I grew up on a steady diet of John Candy, SCTV, uh, and then I'll right there in the heyday of evening at the improv and comedy on the road. And you just, you know, I just wanted to make people laugh. I wanted to, wanted to be on SCTV, and I didn't know how to do that because there was no improv groups I didn't know about. Right. That. And then I found out about <clears throat> open mic nights and uh, amateur contests. So I was living in Red Deer at the time. So. No one and, lives in Red Deer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. Exist. I lived there for six they months. Yeah. You do six months I was there. Oh, thrive is the yeah. word I'm looking That's for. Right. Thrive. No one <laughs> thrives in Red Deer. You do a stint yeah, in Red Deer. Yeah. And I was driving to Edmonton and Calgary every like Thursdays to Edmonton, Wednesdays to Calgary to do their open mic nights. Right. And I'd say after about a year, they had a contest. And Tim, you remember this. It was at a People's Comedy Festival in Toronto. Oh, good so Lord. the winner got to go to the People's Comedy Festival in Toronto. So I won out of Edmonton, went to the People's Comedy Festival in Toronto, finished second behind uh, Dave Hook. Ah, yeah. Rest in peace. And uh, get, got back to Calgary and started. they started working me right away as far as an opener and oh, middle wow. act. And so it's uh, kind of a dream come true. And you were 19 or 20 at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, wow. And then uh, I moved to Calgary pretty soon after I got the stand-up gig. Where are you originally from? Uh, I grew up in Spruce Grove. In Spruce Grove, yeah, okay, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. I spent my formative years there, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Then my dad got transferred to Red Deer, and I moved there, and yeah. like you said, did a stint, in. <laughs> and it became <laughs> and uninformative. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then I moved to Calgary. I got married for the first time, and, yeah, uh, and then just started working the road. And back in those days, comedy was 
that was the juiciest pair you could have because they were paying for rental cars. They were paying for meals. The the shows were triple what they pay now. Wow. Because it was the heyday of stand-up. Sure. Everybody was going. And sure. now that slowly petered out. Yeah. That was a around. fun era. Yeah, it was. For sure. you, you just show up with your gas receipts and your meal receipts. Because this is what? Late 80s, early 90s? Ooh, what is it? Somewhere in that That's, neighborhood. Yeah. 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 Quick early nineties, yeah, early nineties, yeah, yeah. That's why I got the comedy. Can't do math. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Tim? How how'd you? Uh, why'd you I, get into I, this racket? I had no intention of it at all. I, I I went to school to to be an actor and a playwright, and then uh, after four years of that, I pretty much figured out I don't play nice with others. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was training to be a chef, and I fell down a flight of stairs. What? And, this is a true story. Oh, good. Sorry. Yeah, no, you. I have uh, I fractured my back in two places. And uh, I had a, a friend of mine who I, I was I was on workers comp for the better part of a year with this back injury, and a friend of mine signed me up for because I'd always been that smart ass at the kitchen right. party, right. like sitting there with a beer, like here's the problem with whatever, yeah, yeah. and you know have people who get titters and jitters and yeah. stuff. Like I think that. that's true for all of us. Yeah, right? yeah, you're the yeah. guy at the party, like hey, say something. And, she, and, yeah. she, and then my, this friend of mine is like, you should do stand up, and I'm like, well, you know, I just I just come off this experience in university with with having issues with. Uh, working with other with people, other, yeah, <laughs> sure. I'd write something, they'd say it wrong. I'd direct something, they'd do it wrong. Right. I'd act something, I'd have to go against somebody. Right, like, right. Like, and it, it I don't. It, it's hard now, thirty some odd years later, to figure out whether or not it was just complete ego, but it just <laughs> didn't feel right. Right. And uh, this friend of mine signed me up. I went to. It was in Vancouver, the Plaza Nations. Right, there. That's the old one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it went okay. Like there's there's no you know from out of nowhere like, right yeah, yeah. first time yeah. Like, like, yeah. you don't know what to expect you know, yeah. I had some really hacky Star Trek jokes and just, <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't go bad it gave me enough of a taste for it I was like that was okay sure and then I I I, I was on workers comp for a year and I ended up just hitting every open mic and right. I, I had the ability to go like uh, somebody go like sometimes somebody needs an opener in Victoria and it's fifty bucks. Which right now, like, you couldn't get me to move my <laughs> eyebrows for yeah. that money. Yeah. But at the time, it was like, I, I will just go and do You're this. Getting stage time, and yeah. it kept getting, but I did probably 300 shows in that year. And by that point, I had developed enough of an aptitude and a taste for it. It's it's kind of, there's, a, there's an interesting quality to stand up about what, there's a tremendous amount of addicts. And I've always wondered yeah. if, it's a, if it's a chicken and the egg kind of thing, <laughs> does this industry attract them or create them right and oh, that's interesting i think yeah. it's, i think it's a little bit of both sure. i think and i think the one thing that most of us are chasing is that incredible feeling you get when a show goes really well oh, or when a joke lands like sure yeah I'd, i've there's a whole lot of i have a pretty addictive personality so i've stayed clear of a lot of recreational pharmaceuticals <laughs> <laughs> because i'm like you know i would like to live in a house and yeah. Yeah. if i do that then i get to live outdoors <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> or with other 40 year old comics yeah no there's there's, 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 there's <laughs> different there's, paths yeah, yeah so i've always been very wary of 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 not going down alleys that look like fun but yeah it, that's going to cost you sure like figuring out what the value of that that's smart, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you end up with a family. But of, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the addictive nature of that. I think we're all kind of chasing that little point. bit of that, chasing the point. dragon of that, what well, it feels like when it's going. Right. Yeah. Like, it just feels like butter smooth on rails. You're just right. throwing it's like softballs in. Yeah. And they're just wow out of the park, and like hitting the drive through. You're, you're just right like off the, the sweet. You're spot, standing yeah. there like Sonic the Hedgehog, like <laughs> tapping yeah. your foot yeah. for the laughter to end, and you're like, yeah. "This is better than all the drugs I've ever done." That, ever. that is an addictive <laughs> feeling. You're right. That's an addictive feeling. Like, and then, especially and then, when you write a new joke and it goes over, then you're oh. like, "Oh, come on." Or yeah, hook me up. Or yeah. you come up with something on stage, yeah, which like makes just, the joke better. Yeah, a yeah. Tag just or a something tag. Like that. Well, that's but the, but that's the thing is when you guys are out grinding it and and doing the new material and doing that. That is how you're mastering it, right? Is, it, is you're sure, trying yeah. to something new on stage, and oh, this is going to work. That might not work. It's just constant right. trying to to create. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And if you get a new joke to just to kind of work, and you can go tweak it, but you're happy that it kind of worked, and now here we go. We but got it, we can there's build there's a, there's a uh, I've always appreciated sort of the the, the correlation between stand up and really well played jazz. Like these are masters of their instruments. And if something comes to him, a little phrase or something, right. like, yeah. and it's like, well, that's not really in the song, but that sounded cool. Yeah. Like, nice tag. Yeah. And there's a point where you get, uh, when you're doing this professionally, and, you know, I don't, it's a different mark for every single person, but there's a certain point where you're like, I get bored 
out of my mind telling the same jokes the same way. I sure. can't ever put the needle on the record. Like we did the show last night, 45 minute set. I'm probably going to do maybe 20 of that. And right. uh, I've always had this, this interesting philosophy of stand up is just, if you know where you're going to, what the big punchline is, right? You, get, you can wander off the path. Yeah. Yeah. If you know how you're getting back on, you know sure. what's coming back to like, you. Oh, let's go, you, you know, and it all depends on the mood. You know, if it's, there's, there's two types of shows in, in stand up for real, which is I cannot believe I get paid to do this. Yeah. And give me my money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, there's yeah. very little gray. Yeah. I'm going and, back to the hotel. And a lot of it has to do with, uh, for me personally, is it was that fun for me. Right. Sure. I've had shows where I've, where everybody's like, that was great. I was like, that was just. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That too. felt like carrying a piano yeah. up the stairs. Like, right. just. Okay, people. Or the old, come uh, on. Or the, uh, the audience member will come, come up to you. Well, I thought you were funny. All right. All right, thanks. Why weren't, you, why weren't you laughing? Well, nobody else was. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell, I don't, hey, <laughs> tell your <laughs> face. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. I thought you were funny. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, yeah. I've yeah. had that. You're like, okay, thanks. That's, that makes me feel much better. The, you guys must have had some incredibly interesting interactions <laughs> with people over the years. Because the thing is, I mean, you guys, are, you guys have played – Big shows, little shows, little hick towns, big cities. You must meet some very interesting people on the road. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The head checkers. The head checkers. (laughs) So anyway, let me tell you a joke. And then the head check, the left, right? So anyway, two whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then he goes into the most racist joke. (laughs) Oh, no. And you're like, well, you know. Yeah. As it turns out. Or the the funniest guy at the factory. Hey, Gary here, he's the funniest guy down on the floor. Do your impression. When I hosted Amateur Nights, I used to say, I'm not mad at him. I'm mad at the people at his work that that said he was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Well, it happened to you. Uh, hey, you should be a stand-up you comedian. Know the only thing is it worked. Well, I always tell these guys that want to come up and say, hey, I kind of want to get into it, but I'm nervous. I always tell them, I think Tim will agree, go watch an open mic night. Just go sit and watch one, and you'll have the confidence to go, well, I can do better than maybe four or five of those guys right. did tonight or equally as bad. But if you just watch one, that'll give you the confidence to. Oh, more than likely. All right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> I may not be that guy funny, yeah. but I'm way funnier, way funnier than that. Than yeah. you, guys. you know, it's it's funny because I, 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 I try to be funny. I try right. to be a funny I guy. I think you are. I think well, you're thank successful. You. I'm, that guy. I'm looking for that, so thank you. <laughs> um, but I've had people, too, like, oh, you should be a stand-up. And I always go, no. Like, and actually, I would love it. I think it would be an absolute blast, and I think it would be great. And I'm screwing up the mic here. <laughs> I think it would be great. But I, there is no possible way that I could write something – and then have the, the the balls to get on stage and try to present that. Like for me, it's just whatever's happening in the moment. Like let's have some fun with it. Let's be goofy with it. But the concept of of actually putting that together and then having that courage to go out there, like you you know Will it's, Hannigan. You guys know young yeah, Will yeah, Hannigan. Yeah. Will was on here and he and he told me about the first show he did. He said it was like a, you know a, a crowd of nine people. Right. And he bombed so bad, and it was so awful. And he goes, and I said, well, then what? He goes, I got off the stage, and all I thought was, where where, and how can I do this again? Like, oh, he just wanted to do it well, so I, badly. Yeah, no, and I've, 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 in part of what we do in, in a lot of times when we'll do a comedy club on the Wednesday or the Thursday, right. they'll have their uh, pro-am open or open mic. Yeah. And a lot of times they'll have us ask us to come in and speak to the, right, the yeah. community right. and do, like, a little workshop yeah, or whatever. That's right. yeah. And my workshop is three minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> It's re- really. Is. I think I agree with what you're yeah. going to say here. No, yeah. no. It's just like your job is to be funnier next time than you were today. Right. Sure. And then uh, the magic trick to stand-up comedy is use as few words as possible to get a complete stranger to understand your point of view. Yeah. Hmm. Right. And just be a, 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 and then be objective. If something doesn't work, don't keep chasing that. Sure. Right? And it's about the process. And that, then I take, so, and then I take, an well, I, and I take, I take questions after that point. And it's, and, and one of the things that I often recommend is somebody who's been in it for three or four months is go out and, and bomb on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Go and just cut the engines and point the plane at the ground. Yeah. And then you'll understand that that's as bad as it'll ever get. Right. Yeah. Right. That once you, it's, you know, we're talking about fear and we're talking about that sort of thing. But the, the idea is, is that you become less afraid of something when you un- when you understand the texture of you've it. already witnessed the worst of it yeah right yeah. Yeah. so when you got because and you know 
we, we just mentioned this 26 and 30 some odd years here in this business it, it sucks to bomb yeah mm. yeah especially because you, <laughs> you think you've got it crafted you know, oh yeah after yeah. all these and, years and yeah. at a certain point it, it's like golf like every yeah. once in a while like you uh, you hit a perfect <laughs> drive and then you shank one into the rhubarb yeah. and you're like where did that come yeah. from yeah. Like, yeah yeah i thought i was good at golf yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> like it shakes you up for a couple and holes. even after all those years you go back to your hotel room going what am i doing this yeah. for yeah oh yeah, and, uh, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you think you can teach funny though, Tim? Like you, you can can't. teach you can teach joke structure and like you can't, but you can't teach natural funny. In my opinion. Oh right? no, I don't think you can. No, no. But, but because but, you have people giving comedy courses, sure, people pay to take the course. You can tell them how to do a pun or a spin on words, but you sure. can't teach deep down funny. I know people yeah. that have taken those courses and yeah. they're not funny. No, exactly. Yeah, and, and they, I'm not trying to be an asshole. No, it's true. No, no, yes. You have but, to be. It has to be in the inside you. The, sure. The actual. But it, it's just, but the same thing. You can go to basketball camp, but if you're yeah, five right. foot five, you're probably not making <laughs> the NBA. Point, yeah. Right. It's like, a good point. Yeah. You sure. know, there's so if you don't have the funny, you're not. The very anything. few people like it, 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 it. There's a combination that that just has to exist. Yeah. There has to be some nugget of talent. Some oh, think of it like yeah, a diamond. Absolutely. Yeah. If the tiniest diamond can be polished. Yeah, and the biggest diamond can be broken. Sure, right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> sure. So, so and, and, and about ninety nine percent of this is 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 effort. Yeah, you got to go and do it. And and with with I've heard you know uh, what maybe Norm Macdonald and Brent Butt walked on stage funny. Yeah, and yeah, I don't I've, believe I've heard that too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like they were practicing in their rooms. For they sure. were doing something. They were going through a process. Sure, because that's not a thing. Just walking up on stage. Oh, good and lord, no, no. Yeah, no. I, you know, I, I, nobody in the history. I, I think I've got kind of a, a, a handle on this. Right. Thirty years in. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I know yeah. that there's stuff I still yeah. need to learn. Yeah. yeah. But that's but, a great attitude to have because too many people get a little cocky, a little arrogant. Oh, it's uh, nightmarish. Uh, uh, there's right. guys out there that for sure. Oh yeah, sure. somebody's yeah. been doing comedy yeah. six months, releasing an album. Yeah, or it's the audience's yeah. problem. I do one do well. every yeah. ten years. Yeah, yeah, right. Because yeah. it has to be. And you know, uh, we just went through the Junos. We're here in Edmonton. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I my album came out last year. Didn't get nominated. Right. right. I took two minutes and went me. <laughs> didn't get nominated. And I went. You know what? My next one better be better. Right. Sure. Sure. Right? And that's and I think that's part of. Because what we're talking about—that's being relentless, right? For the there. most part, sure well, it's not. Done, it, it, but it's it's being focused, and it's being. I'm a big believer in the process. Yeah. Like uh, I have a my my youngest daughter is in Irish dance, right. and and they go to these dance competitions, and they get little ribbons and trophies right. and stuff like that. She's like, I want to place first. I'm like, I'll tell you how to place first. Do the work. Mm -hmm. right? Do the process. And then you become bulletproof at that point because if you go through, because you never know with a judge, you never sure. know with an oh, audience, yeah, just, yeah. you sure. never know. It's all subjective. If, yeah. if, if, if there's yeah. a subjective That's like comedy contest, if there's a subjective right. component to something, like, um, and then well, the other part of my workshop is I tell them don't ever tell a joke that you think is going to work that you don't think is funny. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. Because then if you go, you know, it happened last night. Oh, well, there's one you didn't care for. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Was, but that was funny. Well, like, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. You have to acknowledge it for sure. Yeah. No, yeah. but it's but it, that but that's part of the – I don't believe that I can bomb in the true sense of the word because I, I, I – mostly just feel bad for the audience like right. that was a really funny job <laughs> you missed it completely yeah. but fair enough yeah. you know yeah. you, you don't like greek food and here i am yeah. giving you a plate of tzatziki and 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 but you're good enough to and whatever dig, dig yourself out of that hole well, and just but, get them going, but you, yeah. just, you gotta throw it out there yeah sure right but i believe in the bit i believe in the material i believe in my process i believe that the way that i've constructed it is valid right and i have a lot of belief in my presentation right. yeah but i also don't get resentful it's, it's we talk about amateur nights there's nothing funnier than watching an amateur comedian just after two minutes into a five minutes it goes here's another one you won't like yeah yeah and that's it's just like yeah, watching yeah. the air come out Buddy, of a balloon it's a just chance. like yeah, yeah. he just gave them permission to hate you yeah sure like you so, have well, no well, confidence in the ability isn't that an important thing to think about you just gave them permission to hate you. Yeah. So much of stage presence is do not give people that permission. Right, right. Like that's the way that – I mean, when I think of stage presence, you know, I'm going to go to you, Kevin. Right. Like you come out – like you're booming out there. Well, that's – because I'm not as good a joke writer as Tim, so <laughs> I, Fat Monkey's got to dance to get laughs, you know. Yeah. So that's – And Dry Monkey's got to <laughs> trip it up a little yeah, bit sometimes. Yeah. But, but, but no, but let's think about this. The confidence that I believe it takes to get up there – and tell those jokes like what's what's your deal, Kev? Like what's uh, what's your process? Oh, jeez, I don't know. It's uh, really just 
everyday life stuff for me is what I put into my comedy. And really, my process is exaggeration with facial expressions and like a the milking comedian, it till it moves. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the comedian Brian Regan was my inspiration growing up. I don't know mm, if you know who he is. What but, a terrible, terrible yeah, example. But uh, of yeah, an incredibly the best gifted comedian. Comedian. Yeah, and but for me, it was uh, yeah. I. I put a little more physical into mine. Sure, the jokes aren't as uh, smart, but if they if you, they they see you're having fun, if you're, I think it was a comedian friend of ours, uh, uh, B J Woodbury. What? When I was first, yeah, what? <laughs> when I was first working with him on the road, we were in Cranbrook, and there was three people in the audience, and I'm just and I'm like, oh, this is gonna suck. This is gonna suck. He goes, just go play in the sandbox. I go, what does that mean? He goes, you remember when you were a kid and you just be at a park and you'd play in the sandbox by yourself. Eventually, the other kids would come join you. He goes, go play in the sandbox. And that's what he meant. Just get up there, pretend you're having fun, and the three people, four people are start like, oh, okay, this yeah. guy's actually pretty funny. You know yeah. I mean? So I've taken that with me everywhere I go. Especially I love that. Just play in the sandbox. Yeah. yeah. I, but that's such I, a great I, attitude. But I, yeah, yeah. at the same time, like I, if I, I, the last time I got banned from that gig, <laughs> Cranbrook, lucky. The Heritage Inn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah lucky. That yeah, was it was, n- well, okay, it was fair enough. There were, some guy came in, and you're not funny. I'm like, I'm the last guy. There's another bar in the hotel. <laughs> it's not going to get better for you. <laughs> so he went and complained to the manager. No, oh, man. And the, and the good dude was like, uh, you know, we can't have that kind of thing. I'm like, you don't give a damn about oh, this show. You're, you're the everybody. worst. Right. And then we kind of hashed it out because it was Friday and we had another show on right. Saturday. And then I went on social media and I was like, you know, like if a meteor is coming towards Earth, I really hope it lands in an unpopulated area. But if it has to <laughs> hit a place with people in it, I recommend the Heritage Inn in Cranbrook, oh, British well, Columbia. Well, the thing, about, the, thing about that, the thing about that show was... It was and then you got banned. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, again, like you don't, you can't fire me. Like I, I had already told people that I wasn't ever going to go back because right. it was a weekly show for decades. Yeah, but the fact, the thing is, the hotel had to have it. Something to do with their license. Oh, they had to have a comedy. There's weekend. a yeah. There's a BC like so their license. Yeah, thing. so they're forced yeah. to do it. So Where you have they to have didn't live care about it. Oh, yeah. nobody cared about it. Yeah, and they yeah. just. They just ran it into the ground eventually. Tough but, gig. Yeah, the well, servers would. Yeah, when they don't you. care. Yeah, like, the yeah, servers. servers are like, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But see, those are stories I love to hear. Yeah, because care. that to me is what builds all this character too, well, right? But and it like, was beautiful because on the Friday night, I go, you know, so very rarely that you go, this is my second last show here ever. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a nice feeling. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're not man. coming back. Oh, man. Was, Where, where's comedy yeah. taking you guys? Where, where's the farthest it's taking you? Ooh, I, you've been more than I. Farthest place I was in Spain doing a show on That's a, pretty far. On a, on a frigate. Seven. Yeah, yeah. On a frigate in front of the... For the Navy, Canadian Navy, with oh. Finger Eleven as the headliner. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, that was, and the the show was on the, whatever the bow of the boat or the cool. stern, whatever, and it was lit for nighttime. They brought in all the lights and the sound system, and probably my favorite show of all time. Oh cause, yeah, because it's uh, everybody on the ship is they're on, uh, whatever a break. They get yeah. the, the night, the two days furlough off. or whatever. For, it's yeah, called. so yeah. they get. They get out of their uniforms and they get dressed up and they were just having a blast. Yeah, no, I'm, and you can't go wrong. If you screw what, that show up, you screw that. And show what up. an honor to play for them. Oh right? yeah, it like, really was. Cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we got to tour the the frigate and uh, they showed us their helicopters and because they're it's, it's such a big frigate that <laughs> the helicopter rides on the they had to wow. take it off so we could do the show there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just yeah. guy flying around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, you're going are you, long. You're are you done yet, <laughs> Kevin? We're almost out of fuel. Yeah. Finger Eleven's got an encore. We're in uh, the gas. He's yeah. he's the guy lighting you. Yeah. Five yeah. minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fuel lights light you. Yeah. <laughs> but that was that's one that sticks with me. And I know Tim, you've been doing some of those. Uh, yeah, tours, I did. A, uh, I did a CBC special in Kandahar. Right. right oh, wow. that was banana yeah. pancakes. That yeah. was. Just, what was the setup for that? Was it a, just a built stage? It in was like a. Or? It was like a big Kwanzaa hut. Hmm. Like, but we were like three hundred feet from the flight line. Jeez. Oh man. Yeah. So, and and there were two missile attacks during the show. Oh. Like <laughs> literally bombed. <Yes. laughs> well, I'm doing it with Mark Kretsch, and he oh, yeah. and he was he's such a pro because the, the 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 air raid siren goes off or whatever the right. the incoming missile siren goes off. And he goes, "We'll be right back after this missile." <laughs> <laughs> And I'm terrified. I'm yeah. in a yeah. concrete no, bunker kidding. outside yeah. the thing. Yeah. And just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I couldn't find one of the other comedians. I was there with Erica Sigurdsson. Oh, okay, okay. And I was like, you know, she's like a little sister to yeah, me. And yeah. I'm like, I'm in this dark, it's nighttime, oh. concrete structure. And sounds and above I don't, you. I don't, oh. And then, and then yeah. you know, the, the, the TV producers are like, hey, you know, if we could do some interviews and stuff. I'm like, I am terrified <laughs> right now. And I don't know where Eric is. That's and crazy. I'm just trying to keep my stuff together. And Oof. then at when we were doing the show, 
uh, one of the the F sixteens took off or whatever jet aircraft. Right, yeah. uh, and and when you see them at the air show, they're not mad. They're not angry. They're just we're at the yeah. air, we're in Habitsford. Yeah. We're having a hell That's of a right. time. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting yeah. cotton candy yeah. after this. In, yeah. the, in the in the war zone, there they hit the afterburners on the ground, and it sounded like the apocalypse wow. to me. Wow. And this is how cool the Canadian Armed Forces are, because I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, I'm freaking out. It's uh, The clip is on YouTube if people want oh, to see really? it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And then somebody in the audience just goes, talk louder. <laughs> <laughs> and the great part was it brought me out of that terror, because I was like, well, are you, like, you maniacs. Like, yeah. They're used to it. This is not something that a human being should be used sure. to. But if they're That's not scared, they're basically saying, oh, we're not scared. Don't be scared. Just yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got you. That's uh, we got you. Kiss my ass. Holy like, no, God. no, no. Like, and it was, a, and, and then uh, some of these things, once you get in, you're in. Right. So, um, like, when I started doing uh, Just for Laughs, some of the festivals around the world started looking at me. So, sure. I went and did my favorite thing I've ever done as a stand-up. It was Kilkenny, Ireland, the Cat's oh, Laugh yeah. Festival. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, it, like, yeah, it was, like, it took one day where some, one of the Irish comics goes, I had this joke about a toilet plunger, and he's like, we don't have them in our houses, the plumbers. Sure, bring I remember that. Like, yeah. yeah, and they're Canadian like, tire. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but learning as you go, because. That's interesting, yeah. Who would, yeah. Know, who would know there's yeah, no plungers we in did, Ireland? We did this warm-up show for the staff, and, and uh, Ed Byrne, right. yeah. brilliant yeah. Irish yeah. comedian, just was like, come here, like, this is probably not the joke for Ireland. Yeah. And but I was this was the first time I'd ever performed for people who weren't Canadian because I've mm, been to military right. places all around the world, either they're like Canadian. the AWAC base in right. Germany and sure. a few other places like that. And uh, yeah, it was the first time. That kind of shows you the tight knit community. Even a comedian from I Ireland he's never met. It just he's the bond of a comedian. I love is, that. Hey, well, we well, I've known him a bit. Oh, from okay. Just for laughs. Either way, other yeah. yeah, yeah. So, okay, way. let's get into that. What what is the so you guys have known each other a long time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it was great when I asked both of you if you want to come on here. And I said, you know, I said, Kevin, Tim's coming, Tim, Kevin. And you guys were like, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect. 100%. Um, you know, what is that bond like? I mean, I'm assuming I'm assuming a lot of your really good buddies are comedians yeah. because of the amount of time you spent with them. Well, I'm assuming. Maybe I'm it, wrong. It gets weird because we're very solitary creatures. Very much but so. uh, Jerry Seinfeld had a w- wonderful quote was that a comedian understands another comedian in 15 seconds yeah. more than somebody who's never done stand up will ever understand. Absolutely. You. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because there's, it's, it's, it's like, it's, and, and I, again, this is a, a really paper thin comparison because I understand completely that being in a war zone. With right. your brothers in yeah. arms. Yeah. Sure. It's so much more intense than we had a rough night in yeah. the. In Fairview That's or right. wherever, yeah. 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 yeah, we didn't get paid. For <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, yeah, like there's there's some, but there's there's a there's a, there's a shared experience, and there's a there's a shorthand. Sure, like yeah. when I go to L.A. or to Ireland or whatever, I can have a coffee or a beer with a comedian, and and there's a shorthand to those conversations because of this shared experience. Yeah, right. And it's it's one of those things where I've often said that comedy is not a team sport. Even though Kevin and I are on the same show, he's doing his thing. Right. There's a break, and then I do right. my thing. Yeah. Like I and it's, and when <laughs> you watch somebody that you care about. Or some of your friends with, and they're eating it hard. Yeah, yeah. you just want to go, mm, mm. Yeah. like, get, put your Bluetooth in. I'll help yeah. you out. Yeah, like, yeah. But there's no possible way to no, do once that. Once you're out so, there, yeah. So comedians tend to be a little bit more lone wolfy, a little sure, more rugged much, individuals because which, we are on our own. Like, if you're in a band yeah. and it's sucking, you can turn to the bass player and go, yeah, "This is the on. worst gig it's only, ever." Yeah. It's only like festivals and stuff where you can really. Well, that's why we together. go yeah. bananas at festivals. Yeah, yeah. You don't rare, ever. You rarely get because I've never really been on the road with him. We've never yeah. driven to Fort Mac or anything. No, we were, both, we were both we've headliners. Met, yeah, we were both we kind of headliners met. at the same time. So. Right. But just being fellow comics, you're friends immediately. And but see, that's the thing is, I do find that that I mean, it's got to be competitive. Right? Uh, no, it no, shouldn't. Hang on. It, it no, is, but it shouldn't. But this is, yeah. and it I'll really solve. irritates me that it There's is. There's a few sure. guys out there that are. A little so bit I guess this is my point: is that with with the you can you services comedy nights. Right. If I can plug this more, yeah, please do. Um, when we bring our crew in, like I've I've got uh, Adam Blank is my host. Yeah, and great Adam's guy. Great amazing. host too. Yeah. And then Sean Lacomber has done a bunch of my shows. You yeah. guys know Sean. Oh, yeah, come yeah. On. yeah. He's, He's just the awesome. best of the best. Yeah. And then Graham Neal. Yeah. Who I don't know. Local TV. Him. Yeah. Local so, TV reporter. So those guys. Be, yeah. And then Dino at the club now. Yeah. 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 Um, those guys now are are kind of 
my my guys that are like, yeah, let's get this guy, let's get that guy, let's nice. get this guy. And what I always want is to make sure that we're bringing the the folks in that play well with others. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Back, oh, back oh, to oh, you, oh, Tim. Yeah. When, when you didn't as a drama <laughs> student. <laughs> but, but the reason I say that is because this is charity work. And I, that uh, maybe that's the wrong way to say it, but I want people that are going to come in and actually care about what we're doing. Well, yeah, absolutely. And in order How to care about what we're doing, that means that you actually have to care about other people that are on the show and actually talk to them backstage and actually be good people. And that's who I'm trying to bring in the show. So, of course, that's why you guys are here. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah, right. No, and it's and it's one of those things too, where it's um, there's there's you can tell when comedians don't like each other. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) Oh, I've seen it. It's very obvious. Oh, yeah. 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 I've Uh, seen it. Different sides of the room. Not for this podcast, but it's a story after. Uh, (laughs) Oh, we could probably tell a lot of stories because the names. could not be changed to protect the innocent That's because right. anybody who hears the story will know exactly who yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll talk, we'll yeah, talk yeah. later. Uh, no, but looking forward to it. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we love the gossip too. Yeah. Comments love oh, the, oh, oh, yeah. We love the tea. Spill yeah. the tea. Oh, yeah. oh, well, somebody's somebody's getting whipped in public, <laughs> yeah. and it's not me. Yeah. Have at it. Yeah. We, we you know what else he did? You know what else he did? Yeah. 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 We love the gossip. Yeah. Like, he did what? Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, uh, there's something about. Uh, I mean, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there, we are mercenaries. Right. Like I get this all the time. <laughs> like somebody's like, "How come you don't do a show in Peterborough?" I'm like, "Because nobody has paid me to do right. a show in Peterborough." Yeah, like right. I live in the Okanagan Valley, and I have a lovely home and a beautiful family, and I'm not going to Peterborough, Ontario, for free. Yeah, like I'm not on, you know. Absolutely, yeah. Don't, yeah. I, you, but it, it's also really, I mean, and part of it has to do, I think, with the with the with the pandemic. We got a big wake up call as a species, oof. comedians. Yeah, because everything, like you know, we're on the pretty much the anniversary. Like I think yeah. it was May nineteenth or March nineteenth, two thousand. Mar- I, I want to say March the, seven, eighteenth. The world shut down. The Relentless Podcast is brought to you by You Can Youth Services, which I am very proud to be a part of. You Can Youth Services is an organization that helps young people move out of harm's way and onto a path of economic independence. If you want to learn more about the incredible work that we do with some very vulnerable young people, please go to www.youcan.ca. That's www.youcan.ca. So yeah, was, it was the day the music ago, died. Like, yeah. I I lost <coughs> like everything. Yeah, so much money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah every one of our gigs just got wiped done, out. Right. And so, like, what do I do now? I've been a comedian and, for and, twenty six. Yeah, yeah, and I, I I had to make sure that my uh, my mortgage was getting paid. I took a job in a kitchen, right, making in a pub near my house. And you know, and two HR meetings, like you know, <laughs> <laughs> within the first week. Oh, it does was, not work well with was, others. It, it was, does not uh, work well with others. Well, but part of it was, especially since you've been a comedian well, for all those years, now you're back. Is, to work. I was is my not own boss. Yeah. I was, I was, uh, I was my own boss ish. Yeah. You know, okay. we're yeah. independent contractors. But you guys are your own bosses. So, some people are, some people aren't. Yeah, um, we need well, agents for a bit. Yeah, we have agents and managers, yeah. and I work sure. with several different yeah. companies. Yeah, but for the most part, it's 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 a it's a one man. But we can choose whether to take the show yeah, or not. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and that's and uh, but it was like uh, it was also I knew like when I got the job, it was a friend of a friend who was like, we need kitchen staff, right. and I would needed money, and it, yeah, it got chocolate and my peanut butter. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but about you know five days in, I'm like, I don't I don't like this. Yeah, this is less fun than what I do for a living. Yeah. And I told I told my boss, I said, the day the world comes back, there's going to be a me shaped hole in that door. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was a, it was an interesting perspective because there was a lot of people who work in the food industry, and that's what they do. Well, that's it. You know what? And their and their eighteen nineteen bucks an hour is how they go through their living. And and you know, like I said, I had an HR meeting with started two of them started with, "Look, we know you don't want to be here." Right. And I'm like, "Well, Joanne, <laughs> <laughs> Joanne, if you were working working for thirty cents an hour." Yeah. as opposed to what you regularly sure. do. Sure. Like, you know. Well, this reminds, me, this reminds me of a story of a really good friend of ours who has recently passed, Matt Billen. Um, years and years ago, we were working, and I was at a, a low point of my mentals uh, and career. Uh, I was like, maybe I'm just going to get a 9-to-5. It's time. I'm getting old. He goes, okay, you want to get a 9-to-5, do you? So you got to get up at 7, 30, 8 o'clock. You got to work all day till 5 o'clock. If you put that much effort into your stand-up, you wouldn't you you wouldn't need the nine to five job right. right you know what i mean so think about 
instead of being that guy that's got to get up at 6.30 in the morning, get up at 8, work on your stand-up for four or five hours, and then you'll be happy again doing stand-up, and you'll sure. be more inspired. And that's when it, it, he kind of inspired me to regroup and sure. put some more effort in. Because yeah, I was phoning again for a few years. But, there, we, yeah. but, sure. but we talk about the, when we're talking about the process, and that's one of the processes, too. And that's one of the other magic tricks of being a professional stand-up comic is that um, it's being funny at 9. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you know? especially, especially after those shows where they've had a big meal when you're doing those big oh, what, community just, halls. Just whatever. They're all but, full of turkey. And, yeah. But it's but you're on demand. You, you can't create funny on demand, but right. you have to put on your show on demand. Sure, right. and, that's and good point. I, and, and we've done I, – I did a show the day that the Twin Towers came down. Right. Uh, that was like, mm, you know. I did one during that Humboldt, the night of that Humboldt yeah, bus yeah. crash. I had to be on stage. I did a show in Humboldt like Ugh. four months after that. Yeah. And, and you know, there was a note on the gig sheet. Like, please do not of reference course, or yeah. do. And I'm sure. like, by all means. Sure. Like, I'm not a moron. But <laughs> yeah. But it's that on-demand thing. It's about yeah. being able to manufacture it. And the same thing like with golfers. Like, if, if you're on Thursday at the Masters, you got to shoot a 70. Yeah. Or you're going you're home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and that's the difference, but you know, Kevin's a golfer. I don't know y'all, but but I have. You know, there's no pressure. You know, right. I go out on Thursday with my buddies. Like, right. oh, I shot, yeah, a, yeah. I shot an 86. Oh, we'll play again next week. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you're playing with the guys where there is pressure, like you don't you shouldn't play with them. No, those are, you know, those, yeah. those are those are not fun golfers. No, you want to play with guys that pick it up. It's an eight. Yeah, those kind of guys. Exactly. You didn't drop from shoulder height. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I, oh, yeah, I find yeah. it interesting though what you're talking about, um, like playing playing during the hard times. Because for me, um, comedy is, I don't, I'm not, I don't know, the word healing irritates me a little, I don't know why, <laughs> but it, it can be healing and, and comedy for me, laughter for me, um, and we don't need to get into everything that right. I've been through in my life, but I've had some tragedy right, right. and comedy is key for me. It's key in my home. It's key, like, you know, as gushy as this is, it's key in my heart. It's almost a medication, almost. It, it can be. Yeah. And Seems it might even be the best medicine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. Put that on a T-shirt. Oh, oh yeah. Hey. Hey. Er- Erwin Barker, a dear uh, friend. Uh, <laughs> right, they they say laughter is the best medicine. Me, I'm going to go with chemotherapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sir. He had cancer at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Why couldn't this happen to a hack? <laughs> that was the best line ever. But but honestly, you guys, comedy is such an important thing. And some like you know these other guys I've mentioned, they're always like, ah, Dubai, you know, you're taking it too seriously. But I'm not. I really believe that places like the comic strip here at West Ed uh, are special places. Mm. I do. I believe that they're places that, that you know, I mean, listen, it's a business. I understand that. I understand that these, these are your jobs. You get paid. Right. Hang on, Tim. Like, well, you're jump in. Hang on. <laughs> you guys get paid for doing this. But here's the thing. My job's actually kind of cool, too. Like, it's, you know, not Absolutely. Sound, but it's, it's a cool job where we get to help all these vulnerable young people. But I get paid. Yeah. yeah. But – this is my point of the comic strip. This is my point of you guys is that the purpose of it is massive in this world. And it helps so many people. You know, you know what? There was people at our show last night that were struggling that day. Hmm. Last night, you guys helped them. I had people after the show come up to me and two people in particular. And I love this phrase when they say right. it. My face hurts. I like that one. Uh, yeah, that's and right. I love yeah, that one. Yeah. Right. And I know for a fact that there was one person in particular that there was la- there last night that almost didn't make it. They were struggling really. They're one of the people that said that to me. That's great. That's and that to me is the purpose of comedy, the purpose of your jobs, the purpose of the comic strip. That's why I love to raise money for the serious work that we do. Through laughter, that's because it's, it's the best. We when we when you first approached me about coming into these shows, that we were having a great conversation about I've that since the pandemic, since we've actually come back, that I've been. Uh, my wife <laughs> was very angry at me because when I was devastated by the by my industry and For my sure. and my because it's not just a, a job; it's a calling. That's yeah. In some respects, yeah. like yeah. And we were talking about before the show, but there's a first best density. Density. I just did the, the <laughs> thing from the movie. Uh, oh yeah, you're talking about <laughs> graphic. You are my <laughs> density uh, from Back to the Future. But oh, okay, what you're supposed to be doing, and one of the things that that I I've, I've been doing this for three decades is that I lost who I am in the universe because it's not just 
you know, I don't work for, for Honeywell or, sure. or, or some big company. And then I go do that same job at another company. Like there isn't those, like the industry, the thing that I did. And one of the things that I'm, and I'm not, I don't want to be an egomaniac, but I'm pretty good at it yeah. Sure. Yeah. because I've put all this time and energy right. into it. And the idea in my, and I was 51 at the time when the pandemic, I like, oh, in my fifties, I'm going to go, what, be an electrician? Right. That's, like, that's, and there's nothing wrong with yeah. the, with electricians, but the idea of but that's having, not what you but, do. No, but having to go back to the beginning and put all the effort and all yeah. the sacrifices and all the the blood, sweat, and tears. And I, and I know when you, when people say things like that, it's always like, oh well, you know, it wasn't a struggle at the time, right. but you can look back and see the steps, and you go, well, it's I, a grind. I could not go back to to opener money. Right, I right. could not go back to, right. to having to break my way into the industry again. Right. But that's because it's yeah. harder than it was now, by my estimation. Yeah. You have to have a social media following, and you yeah. have to be yeah, it's a whole famous world. on YouTube. And yeah. It's not about whatever. There's sure. all these other extra components that some of us are dinosaurs, just like Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm working on it, yeah. but at the same time, I'm, I'm more interested in the, in the process and the, and the, the, the show. But uh, yeah, so but you know, but 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 finding out what you're supposed to be doing is a is a gift, and the gratitude that I come from, which is I really enjoy the the type of show that we did last right. night, and and it doesn't happen every time, but there's something about that what is it, ninety minutes, two hours yeah. of time, where more often than not, the same sort of conversations I have with people after the show is like. A lot of people feel compelled to say, you know, like my dad died a couple of weeks ago, sure. and I was just. For the, the the two hours, I wasn't thinking about that's it. That's what you're. I was yeah, magically transported was at, away, yeah, yeah. and it's and it's one of those things. And again, it's not our purpose, but my God, it's one of the great yeah. perks of this job. I've always said, if you make somebody go home and he doesn't kick or he kick his dog that night, you've done a job, right? You know, you, you know, you're like if you made the guy cheer up, you sure. Know, you may even had it. Him and his fight, may, my wife may have been fighting or whatever. And sure. then after that, they're like, you know what? That was a good night. Sure. Like, Put some yeah. positive energy yeah. into the world. Yeah, that's there you go. Yeah. And so, well, however you can do so it. So, like, that's the purpose, though. And that yeah. to me is why your jobs are so purposeful. That yeah. to me is why the comic strip and other c- clubs are purposeful. Yeah. And I have over the years, you know, literally, I'm involved in stand up comedy, you know the tiniest little bit because we produce these shows and I've been very fortunate that I've had a lot of people along the way help us do this. And I've been able to meet all these people, but I've just, it's become such a realization in my life in the last couple of years of the importance of it. That's and great. I, I, and I, it's I, helped I, you. It's helped you. So it's helped me. Yeah, and yeah. I struggled with it too, because you know, you'd be driving home from a show and you're like, what the hell did I do? Yeah. Like, I'm a soap bubble salesman. Yeah. Like half the people don't know my name. Yeah. Half the people are going to tell my jokes wrong at work tomorrow. Like <laughs> sure, that's the struggle just, too. Is it, and and then, but I found that there's no retirement plan for fifty year old. Well, I don't want a retirement yeah, plan. Yeah. Like that's one of the things, right? We were yeah. talking about this first that's best destiny yeah. thing, where look, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, right? Like I, 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 and this maybe this is a Gen X thing. Maybe it's a thing. Like my parents lived or worked to live. Sure, that right. was their yeah. philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. I got up at five. My my stepfather uh, was a heavy duty mechanic, and right. he got up in and worked on uh, machines that peeled poles for right. telephone poles. But it's mud, and it's yeah. B.C., and it's rainy, and the winters <laughs> are awful. Yeah. And just with the scowl of the uh, thousand suns every day, and he just hated and he lived for the weekends. Yeah. Right? And he lived for that two weeks that he went to Vancouver Island every summer. Like, sure. And I just, when I was 18, 19 years old, trying to figure out my purpose and where I'm going in life, I went, you know, I got to enjoy what I do. I told my kids, you know, my youngest or oldest just ended up in university. And I said, what would, if you didn't have to worry about smokes and donuts yeah. and your rent, <laughs> yeah. what would you get up and just go do? Yeah. Just for the, for the shits and giggles, yeah. just to just do that. What would bring you joy to do the, pro, the work? Be happy to wake up every yeah, day. Yeah, now I'm paying it. for a dinosaur scientist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm craving smokes and donuts. Yeah. Oh. Who isn't? I, I am. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have a dart after. Uh, right. um, no, and I think that's great. And and I know for me, I was the same way. And my dad's a very hardworking guy, and I just respect him so much. And, and he provided and, and put his head down and, and worked hard. And I don't think he loved his jobs. No. 
think that was that generation. Yeah, you know, yeah no, was, but I they just, but they, I, they, you know, I, I heard this conversation between somebody and their father. So, what makes you think you can enjoy your job? Huh. I right. was like, what makes you think that you couldn't? Right. Right? right, and it's just it's about a mindset. And, I, I found, and I, it's I was not the same all way though, Tim. But it's not all. But it's not all giggles. Like you know, no, you're doing no, a show. No. You're halfway through a 45 minute set, and they're full of chicken and yeah. contempt for you. Sure, but also yeah, you, you gotta, guys being you on the road deep. as much as you have, like that, that had to be tough on families. Yeah. And, you know relationships and all that type of stuff a lot of people i think too when they look at comedians <laughs> this will make you guys laugh probably they think wow this is so glamorous <laughs> 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 maybe maybe this laugh of the day. maybe 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 kevin hart yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. but i'm I think, assuming I think, kevin hart had to start too for sure where oh, it wasn't yeah. glamorous right and so i guess like you know i, I, I won't gush over you guys too much but it, it just really is such an important thing and and I, I'm I'm thrilled that there's people like you that that you know this is a calling in my opinion because you know yeah. uh, I don't like you, you can't teach funny right yeah and and so I, I really do think it's amazing and I love that you guys are so into the charity work we've talked about it too you love doing the charity stuff oh, too right oh. yeah 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 this, it, it, there's extra motiv- motivation to do it I think yeah and especially the you can thing just hearing that young man last night what you guys have done for him. Just it's mind blowing, and you do it for more than just him. I know you do it for mm-hmm. hundreds and hundreds. Yeah, of he was the kids. spokesperson. Yeah, yeah and yeah, it's just yeah. you think you think you got it bad. Listen to that kid oh, last night. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. No. I, you know, know. And it's just yeah. so I, I admire what you do. The beauty. So the beauty of that young lad, Cruz, is that he he had it bad. He, I understand oh, from what he, he had it bad. Yeah. But but like his story he, was so weird, bad that we're like, are we going to be able to make people he, laugh yeah, after right. this? But like, but <laughs> but this is the beauty of his story is that he ends. Because he's doing well now, yeah. yeah, and that's the relentless yeah. piece in his life. So and it ends on an uptick. It yeah, does, yeah. right? And and so with our shows, you know, there's obviously there's a recipe to doing comedy nights for a fundraiser, right. and yeah. you want to pull at some hard strings. Absolutely, and, oh, yeah, you want to do all that, and it's not manipulation. We're trying to tell you a story yeah. here of what we do. This is a reality, right? and yeah. But I want everybody leaving these shows with their faces hurting, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I say that to people: come and your your face will hurt because. That's it's an experience. It's it, to me, it's a great fundraiser right. because you go to a lot of fundraisers. You're all dressed up. You're eating rubber chicken. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's and ours and is they're not, not. They're not as they're, and the comedy doesn't go over as well either when they're no, probably, not. No, no. probably not. Probably no. not. Right. Like you do Christmas corporate season and you're doing the Fairmont Palliser or whatever, uh, and they're all dressed up and the mic doesn't work and they're, sure. f- they're 15 tables deep and every year yeah every year between christmas and new year's i'm like i'm, I'm quitting yeah. yeah i'm good because <laughs> it, it rips your soul out those shows because nobody's listening and they, and but you, they pay the well. money's there they right? pay the money's well. there. oh yeah it's, it's yeah. like harvest season like yeah, yeah. we're comedy <laughs> really farmers yeah. Yeah. it's like well the wheat's high enough yeah. to mow and we're off to the race but you're right there's moments you're like what am but, i doing this but, for nobody's oh, like, and looking I, at the stage yeah you know? and i usually book a club or a place where i can just un wind and unleash right. all the because there's just to know that i'm still funny again and, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and it's part of the survival mechanism in canadian yeah. comedy is you kind of have to be a bit of a swiss army knife yeah. sure like i don't really have a dirty show beca- right. uh, for lots of reasons number one right. i've been married for 23 years and the person that I, the only person i'm allowed to sleep with doesn't like it when i talk about it right. <laughs> well that's boring <laughs> Uh, Lou Eisen's ex-wife had the greatest oh, yeah. line ever. Says he used to do a joke about the face I made when I had an uh, orgasm, and he didn't see that face for a long time. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, you talked yeah. about it on stage. Yeah, this, yeah, I read that. It was in a in a newspaper article. I read it like three months before my wedding, and I was like, "Brilliant, no yeah. kid, brilliant, no, no kid." Yeah. Now I make fun of the wife all the time, sure, but. Yeah, intimate Which details. Which is weird. No. Your, your wife's a bit different because most wives love when their husbands talk about their sex lives and stuff. So well. your wife's a bit different. <laughs> I've just never, it's, I've never played chicken with it. No, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't. With it. I, I wouldn't if I would. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Until death do us. Okay. Yeah. Yep. No, let's not expedite Until death that. Do us and I just <laughs> talked about what she like. No, that's bad. That's bad. No, I think. Um, well, you know what? I last night I felt even bad and last week ian bag was in town right. i felt bad because like i do kind of put some parameters on you guys where i go i want it to be corporate clean well and we have to know to i that, know yeah. i know i know that but this is what i realized is that like last week bag didn't go crazy offside okay yeah, right no. he does all his crowd work yeah. um he's a funny Which guy he's, great at, yeah. he's a <laughs> funny guy um you know some people are dropping some f but i have to realize you know the crowd they're okay with it 
But I'm always looking at the sponsors going, sure, what if sure. that one sponsor doesn't like it? And, but then a, I feel bad, you know. It's a balancing act. It is a balancing act for you guys because it's, listen, I swear a lot. So, and I, I do, I swear a ton. Like, it's hard on this podcast. I was just saying, we're doing pretty good all three we're of us so far. We're doing really well. But, it's, yeah. but at the same time, like, what we're, we're, we're talking about yeah. this is that, it, and it's all about how you approach things. Like, you know, I, I do a lot, a lot of corporate work. Sure. And uh, I've been doing a bunch of things with uh, IG Wealth Management. They right. Have the least customer, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're not aware. Changed it. Oh, sorry. No, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll but, it out. Yeah. We'll cut but it out. It's, <laughs> but what I, the, again, it becomes all uh, uh, about the approach is that I do a lot of television and radio work as sure. well. Sure. And I can't use those words yeah. on the TV and yeah. I can't use those words on the radio, especially CBC radio. Yeah, yeah. You can't do just for last one. So I right. take the opportunity when I have these 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 parameters imposed upon me to work on the material that I'm going to use on television. Yeah. And I get an opportunity to do 15, 16 shows with those parameters. Right, right. And then, and then the only real challenge is then people go like, "How do I get on that tour?" I'm like, "How do you get on that yeah. tour? Yeah. You don't. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. I've seen your act. Yes, and it's funny as hell. But this is not. You will not. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do it. And no, and there's some that can. Right. No, yeah. You can't make corporate money if you have a certain act. You can't not. Right. Do the shows for oil companies. Or whatever. Yeah. You're yeah. Big, and big and and you got to you you you. Pro- sometimes it feels like you're cutting off a little piece. Of your yeah. Soul, yeah and sure. there's something about it where. Where it's like, you know, this joke is way funnier the way I wrote it yeah. than the way I got to do and it that's here. that's where I feel bad, yeah. right, as a guy producing the show because I'm like, oh, I'm limiting these guys, right? Nah, but yeah. but it, it forces us. I, I was working with a, a comedian the other day, and she was like, oh, I wrote this joke, and it had some questionable, it was about um, uh, chapstick. Okay. And she was like, I'm not blankety-blank dudes and alleys for chapstick. I said, you don't use the term. Say unspeakable acts. Sure, it's a t- it's a yeah. tighter phrase. Sure. Yeah, and you can tell it on the radio. Yeah, yeah. right. That's so smart, so yeah. it, it, it 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 we're talking about being relentless. One of the things that that you, you it, when you have a process, when you're committed to doing the best job you can in whatever circumstances there are, being able to think around a corner, or being presented with, let's be honest, a minor challenge of not swearing right. your face yeah, off sure, at yeah. a corporate event. Sure. Like, you know, you're well compensated for it. The yeah. other thing is, is you have to take your ego a little bit out of the mix yeah. because there's something when you're doing a comedy club or you're doing a theater show or something like that where people paid money to see you yeah. rather than, oh, they have shrimp and a comedian. Right, well, yeah. I like shrimp, right. but I don't like comedians <laughs> yeah. when they're forced to be there for some sort of function. Yeah. And it really, it becomes one of those things where I have gotten better jokes by having to color within the lines. Right. Yeah. And then when I get into a, an open form environment, I can do it both ways and see where right. it is. But I, I make it part of my process now. It's interesting, though, you talk about, you know, the shrimp and the this and that. Our event is not super corporate, even though it no. is. We yeah. sell big corporate yeah. sponsorship. Um, you know, our tables are, you know, I think reasonably priced for many of the events around here, our normal tables. But the best move we made and it was COVID driven was going to the comic strip. Right. Yeah. Because we used to do it. We did it in some ballrooms. We actually, we did it at the old Paramount. Theater yeah. I remember after, doing which that was one. amazing. Yeah, I love that. that venue. Having it sold out. Yeah. But then we went to selling tables, which just increased everything. And, and when we moved it because of COVID where we started doing multiple nights, um, to comic strip, it's the best place for it. You're yeah. playing tennis on a tennis court, yeah, not in a parking go. lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, the comic strip, Dino, they're amazing. The, Everything's the, perfect, yeah. We don't have to do anything. Yeah. Turn we the just, mic on and yeah, let's go. We yeah. just show up because it's what they do every day. But also, it's just the intimacy of that that group of 200 to 250 right. people. Which, don't get me wrong, I mean, we had some nights with six, 700 people, and yeah. it was pretty cool. And right. the roar of that laughter. But honestly, the roar of the laughter in that small room right. is just loud. Yeah, yeah. And and we just love being there. We love it. And we it's love, great we love that guys like you come out and do it for us. And, and – it's an important thing for us. We raise a ton of money, which is great. That's brilliant. Yeah. But I just know that I want everyone to have an experience where they feel good about the cause, right. and then they feel good about the laughter. Right? The win-win-win yeah. situation. Yeah, right. I was it's, just going to say, selfishly, the laugh for the comic strip, the people that are coming to your shows are going to be like, we got to go there more 100%. often. You know? But yeah. this is why the partnership's great. But, it becomes, yeah. but, the, but these are the shows. Like How many times have you done a show where you know, – they sold 50 tickets right. to a 200 seat room right. and the guy's counting out your money. He's like, well, yeah. you're just like, 
Well, yeah. I drove here and did the show, so I yeah. guess he's you know the guy's out of money. Yeah, but yeah, there's yeah. one of those things where you know you do a show and somebody, you know, the the audience is ah, you know, the sponsors, the corporate people are like, this was fantastic, and the yeah. venue is like, yeah, I can't. When can yeah. you have you back? And yeah. you're like, this was more than you promised me. <laughs> yeah, that's sure. awesome. Yeah. Sure, and it that's just a creates, hint. That's yeah. a hint to me. But it yeah. just it, it just <laughs> <laughs> not really <laughs> bring a lot of cash to me. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna say no. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, but the the idea is again we talked about that energy and so much of of I believe a stand up comedy is being in tune with the energy in the room and one of the differences between a, a, yeah. a, a green comedian and a and a, they said that, what's the phrase read the room sure yeah right? there you go it's yeah. not the it's not the it's the energy and there's something I we, I did I don't know how many Zoom shows you did during the pandemic Zero. but oh. it was the it was the it no. was awful oh. Because yeah. I couldn't sense the energy in that's the room. Why could, that's why I couldn't do a Zoom. I think yes. I just, I just oh. I, it, 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 you know, and I. But there's something oh, about no. that immediacy yeah. where where and Kevin's really really good at this, where he goes that laugh is there, like uh, for the radio people, it's you know, <laughs> <laughs> up to a certain point. And he just knows if I just, eh, yeah, it's it going to go a little further. Yeah, yeah. And that creates, but that's a perfect analogy of how you can create and yeah. manipulate the energy in the room. And sure. I don't mean in a negative yeah. way, no, no, but no. in the way of, like, it, it, there's, we get a little accustomed to things, right? You know, here's a joke that I've told a thousand yeah. times. And Wait the, for the laughter. And, and yeah. you're like, Pause for oh, laughter. Yeah. well, that didn't go. Yeah. Yeah. Just, but you go, ah, yeah. and then it goes. And yeah. you're like, yeah. okay, yeah. you, you, you got to know when you got to push, yeah. you know, sure. like if you're skiing, you were, when are you going to hit the poles to yeah. get to the next run yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. That, it, but it, through the, the, the computer, it was just the worst. Oh, I but couldn't imagine, Tim. I feel yeah. Oh, I just uh, I just refuse to do them because, I, like you say, I'm like I I'm a facial flew, expression sure. guy. I right? flew to Moncton Ugh. to do a virtual oh, show. Oh gosh, no thing, and it's delayed reactions. Too, right? <laughs> this is not making sense to me. You <laughs> flew somewhere to do a virtual yeah, that show. makes no, no sense. <laughs> at all. Uh, Grant money was involved. Oh, okay. 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 Use okay. it or lose it. There you go. <laughs> what you if know, we did a virtual show and we flew them all to Moncton? And two of the other comics got COVID. Oh, oh geez. No. <laughs> Well, that worked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Guys, I appreciate you being hey. on here so much. And, and um, Time flew. Listen, we'll wrap it up this way, guys. I ask a uh, – we have what we call the relentless quiz. I rip everything okay. off oh, okay. that I do. No worries. And um, – <laughs> So Stephen Colbert has the late night uh, quiz. So okay. we have uh, a we, it's called the relentless quiz, and this is going to determine whether or not you are relentless. Oh okay. Jesus! Scientifically proven. Okay. Oh, right on. So I'll I'll go back and forth. Okay. You guys ready? Okay. Oh shoot. Okay. <clears throat> You're nervous, Asia. Yeah, I am. Because <laughs> I'm very <laughs> not relentless. Yeah, yeah. You are relentless. You keep saying that you are. Okay, here we go. Fruits or vegetables? Oh, fruits. Fruits or vegetables? Fruits. I, I have two apple trees and a cherry tree. Oh, yeah. Kelowna. Yeah. Oh, oh, Edmonton and yeah. Calgary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bought a nine dollar uh, banana yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. All right. City or countryside? Ooh. Countryside, but close to a city. Nice. Out in the woods, for sure. Okay. Hundred percent. Okay. Dirty bathroom or dirty kitchen? Uh, dirty bathroom. Dirty bathroom. You guys like dirty bathrooms? Oh, the, bathroom? I don't like either. Yeah, that's, but, no, I don't. Or yeah. I got to pick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to pick. Yeah. I don't uh, eat in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, sometimes I do. All right. Salty or sweet? Uh, salty, unfortunately. So you got to be into trouble. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We won't go there. Uh, morning or night? Night. <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> this, <laughs> is, this is before I usually get yeah, up. Does morning start at noon? Because that's a comedian schedule. Adam Blank says he gets up at like 6 every day. Yeah, yeah he's a good he He's relentless. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. a bit much. He's yeah. lying. Well, he's he's doing, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning when my wife alarm would go off. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I do Can not commit on to cheek. that Can... being up yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at all. Totally. <laughs> Have a good day, honey. <laughs> yeah. And you sort of ask everybody this. It's not just because of what you guys do for a living. Right. Favorite comedy movie of all time? Planes, planes trains, and automobiles. Favorite not even close. comedy movie of all time? Holy mackerel. Blazing Saddles. Oh. Mm. Gotta say. Okay. Two classics. Classics. Big party, small gathering. Or uh, small gathering now that I'm older. Mm. Oh, small, yeah. small yeah. like me. Yeah. <laughs> small gathering. <laughs> yeah. Does not party well with others. 
<laughs> he's doing really well today. I got, a, I got a fire table yeah. in the back. How much time do we got before he goes like, off? Oh, How much time do we got? I got to listen to you people. Yeah. <laughs> um, phone in the bathroom or no phone in the bathroom? Oh, phone in the bathroom, sadly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a, certain, a new newspaper. There's a certain yeah. age or where iPad. This guy. this yeah. could be two minutes. This could be twenty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Am I watching Netflix this one or what? Yeah, uh, I'm usually listening to sports radio, but doing the Wordle. That's Guys, the new code around our house. The, the Wordle. Wordle. I gotta go do the Wordle. Taking a Wordle. Yeah. Taking, yeah. A Wordle. <laughs> Taking a Wordle. <laughs> Man, that was a big Wordle. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite love song of all time. Oy, oy, oy. Oh wow! Favorite love song. This is easy for Tim because he gets to think about it. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll go. You yeah. go, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, this is going to be too sucky, but uh, Misguided Angel by the Cowboy Junkies. Oh, oh what is a my, song. Is my wife and I's uh, wedding song. Beautiful. So, Beautiful. That's Beautiful. a great tune. Yeah. yeah. That's a great tune. Yeah, he's and, crazy and he scares me. Yeah, yeah that's us. Yeah. That's yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> And Kevin doesn't have I one. I don't. I don't know. Sylvia's mother. I guess I'll go with my, my wife's favorite song was our wedding song was uh, <laughs> the, the Lady in Red. So we'll okay. Because that, that's ah. my wife's favorite. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, only a couple more left here, folks. Uh, cake or pie? Pie. Pie's plural. Pie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pies. 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 Yeah. pies, but like citrus pies. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, lemon like meringue. Key yeah. lime, lemon meringue. Nice. I'm with you yeah. on that. Yeah. Not nice. cheesecake. I almost bought one at the store yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Just <laughs> keep it in the condo. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it for the other comic. But company. then I was like, ah, I probably just eat the whole thing. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to just yeah, like have one piece and put it happens. back like a schlub. All right. This is the last question. Okay. All right. Describe your relentless podcast experience in four words. <laughs> Memorable, uh, surprising, uh, friends. <laughs> Want to come back? That's three more words. Okay. <laughs> I was where I was going to go. I'm happy to come back. Nice. Yeah, yeah. At any point. Yeah, no. Yeah. As well, well as well as the fundraiser too. I spent any time. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no, no. Well, fellas, I'll, I'd be happy to have you back to both. You guys are amazing. Listen, where can we find you on your socials? Are you a bit? You're not a big, not social, a big social media guy. guy. Yo, I'm on Twitter. I don't even know what my handle is. So. Okay, yeah. there we go. <laughs> Look up Kevin, Kevin Stobo. Stobo. I think, there we yeah. go. I think it's 97. I love McDavid. So okay, always has 97 on the okay. end. Okay. Uh, Tim, yeah, you I, rolled your eyes at McDavid. You like, Tim Nutt, yeah, 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 well, okay. yeah, you <laughs> that's a whole other podcast. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. really we can't is. Get, we can't that go really is. Uh, uh, I'm on uh, on the Facebook. I'm on the Instagram. Uh, I think it's Tim Nutt Comic. I'm on Twitter, uh, which is usually just me yelling at, at <laughs> Amer- American uh, media guys. Yo, I, I, yeah, I love it. I love watching I love it. his Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love your Twitter. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, you, you, if, if you look well, at your likes, it's usually me. I like. I like yeah. that one. That's a good one. Uh, my yeah. favorite one is like you wouldn't say that to someone's face. I'm like you have yeah. no yeah. idea. You, never met yeah. Tim you don't know Tim. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know we're we're keeping it clean, but yeah, no, I will yeah. tell you to uh, f yeah. off in yeah. real life without. So, now, again, granted, I know I'm big and scary, yeah. but, but also, it's also a, kind of fun. A super nice guy. Yeah. Like, Tim's, like, the, yeah, Tim's kind of talking, I, I, don't, I don't like other no, people. Yeah, no. Such a nice guy. But I got guy. no time for yeah. nonsense. I know, yeah, like, but you're a you good know? dude. You guys yeah. are both incredible guys. Thanks, Thank you for being on the Relentless Podcast. Folks, you Great can time. go check out you can, uh, Youth Services at www.youcan.ca. All of our social medias are UCAN Edmonton. Uh, my Twitter is at Kyle Dubay. And I look forward to uh, hanging out with you guys for a couple more nights. Yeah, it's going to be fun. All right. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you.